Hey, what's up, guys? So coming to you today with another What's Next. This one is going to be on the undefeated former WBO super middleweight champion, Gilberto Ramirez. He has uh, been fighting at 175. He just fought for his second time on Saturday, December 18th, when he main evented uh, his own promoted pay-per-view card. And he defeated uh, a 38-year-old veteran, Jose Alfredo, by a 10th round, I believe it was a 9th or 10th round stoppage win. Um, shook off some rust because he hadn't fought since April of last year, 2019, as he was trying to get out of his top rank contract with Bob Arum. And, um, you know, he finally got released earlier this year and has been looking for a fight. So he finally, he promoted his own pay-per-view card and he, um, yeah, got into his own fight and he went out there and got the win. You know, he, it was a little bit competitive, but, you know, when you're shaking off rust and everything, this kind of stuff happens. Um, you know, you, you know, and Ramirez's style calls for, you know, he's got that Mexican style. So it's not like um, he doesn't kind of fight that way. He boxes a little bit. He's a southpaw. But um, he, he does like to mix it up and throw a lot of punches. So not surprised that it was a little bit competitive. But he got the win and he got him out of there. So now the big question is, what's next for Gilberto, Gilberto Ramirez? Well, we really don't know. You know, he's the number one contender in the WBC. And he has been for a while now. But... Um, better be of the unified champion. I mean, he's coming back at the end of January, making an optional defense, and then his IBF mandatory is due uh, early. So, um, does Ramirez want to wait around for better be of? That's a big question right there. Um, you know, let's run through the top ten and see what his options are. Um, again, he's my number nine super middleweight right now, and let's see if he can jump in against anybody else or if any other po if there's any other possibilities. With him being a promotional free agent now, he can go anywhere and fight anybody, you know, um, if they're willing to fight him. So let's run through it and see what's next for Gilberto Ramirez. We start with number one, undefeated Demetri Bival. Well, it's interesting. The, he's a WBA super champion, and this guy, uh, uh, Ramirez, called him out. Ramirez said he wants to that he wants to fight him. So, you know, Bival's supposed to be coming back early in the year. And then maybe we're going to see Bival and Gilberto Ramirez towards the middle of the year for the WBA title. That's a big matchup for both guys. It would do wonders for Ramirez. Ramirez, my opinion, comes in the underdog, but you never know. Bival is very good, but if he knocks him off, Ramirez shoots straight to the top of 175. So that's big for him right there. Um, number two is Arthur Better be if. if he just decides to stay busy, I think one more fight, and then he could probably face Better be if later in the year. It better be as ready to fight three times this year. I think he's going to blow out the Adam Dienz when he defends against him. Then he's got Menlong, Fang Menlong for the in IBF mandatory, which I think he's going to blow him out too. So better be of, as long as he trains hard, he could end up fighting three times this year. And, you know, I, I, think, um, I think the third fight could be a big fight, a mandatory against better, against Gilberto Ramirez. So, that fight is possible for late in the year, but I don't think it happens next for either guy. So let's take that one off the table. All right, next uh, is at number three is um, at, at one at 175 is Joe Smith Jr. Um, not going to happen next. Joe Smith's fighting for the vacant world title in his next fight, the vacant WBO belt. Um, I wouldn't completely rule it out, but I re but. Uh, you know, I really wouldn't I wouldn't completely rule it out, but I think Joe Smith's going to go after bigger fights. But I do think it's possible because Joe Smith is fighting for, uh, on top rank, but he's not a top rank fighter. Um, so uh, he's fighting on ESPN and top rank next, but again, he's not a top rank fighter. So he can pretty, he can fight whoever he wants to. So uh, as long as these two guys had a platform, they could fight, and somebody put the money up. And you know, maybe Gilberto Ramirez, being a free agent, would fight on ESPN one more time. Uh, just to go after a world title at one at 175 and it would be the same world title that he held at 168 so I wouldn't completely rule it out um, but Joe Smith it depends on how Joe Smith looks in February when he takes on Maxime Vlasov because Ramirez might have to wait a while for him and I'm not sure Ramirez wants to do that after just coming back you know he probably wants to come back after about four or five months uh, number four is Sergey Kovalev you know, anything's possible. Kovalev's supposed to be coming back in uh, at the end of January. If he blows that guy out and, and a vacant world title or an eliminator is, is up for grabs, I think Kovalev might go after it. But, you know, Kovalev might want to go after a world title right away after one fight in. So we just got to wait and see um, how he does in his next fight. 
Uh, number five is is former champion Elito Alvarez. Another fight I wouldn't completely rule it out, but um, does Alvarez want to come back in a big fight against a top 10 guy in his next fight after being knocked out against uh, Joe Smith Jr.? I would lean towards the less likely, but I wouldn't completely rule it out either. Number six is Jean Pascal. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out that Pascal would fight a guy like Gilberto Ramirez, but I just think Pascal is going to lean towards the PBC and, and fight a Badu Jack next or um, or somebody like Marcus Brown. But I really think it's going to be the Jack uh, rematch for Pascal. So I'm going to say no, but wouldn't completely rule it out. Plus, uh, Pascal has a secondary world title, and this might be an easier way for Ramirez to win a championship in the second weight class. And then Pascal's got a name. So he might just go for it. So we'll see. Uh, number seven would be Marcus Brown. Not seeing it. Brown hasn't fought since August of last year. It, if and when he comes back, it's going to be against um, uh, probably lower level competition is what I'm predicting. And he's with the PBC. But Ramirez is a, a free agent, so you never know. But I, I don't think so. I highly doubt that one. Number eight is Badu Jack, the former two-division world champ. Not seeing this one next. Um, anything's possible. Uh, but I'm not seeing this one next. I think Jack wants to wants to really get that rematch with Pascal um, or even a rematch with Marcus Brown. So, um, But, yeah, I'm not seeing this one uh, next for uh, for Ramirez. And, you know, as I said, Ramirez is number nine. I have a two-way tie for 10th. There's Lyndon Arthur from the United Kingdom. You know, wouldn't completely rule it out, but stylistically I'm not sure it's the right matchup. Arthur just upset Anthony Yard. Would Ramirez want to take that risk in his next fight? Uh, when he has a title fight pretty much waiting for him. I don't think so. And then finally at number 10, or tied for 10th also, is Jesse Hart. This would be a third fight for Ramirez. He's edged out Hart twice already. I don't think he goes back to the drawing board for a third time to give Hart a chance to pull off the win in the third fight, so I'm not seeing it. So Ramirez, I think he's close to a title shot. I think B Dimitri Bivol, if, if Ramirez is calling the guy out and he's serious, Bivol looks like he's the most possible fight for him next but we just got to wait and see e you know either way I think Ramirez is very close and um, I'm hoping we see him back by maybe April May area and um, I would love to uh, see him and Bivol get uh, get in the ring in a big time fight so see what happens all right guys that's the what's next on undefeated former super middleweight champion Gilberto Ramirez true boxing you've been hit with the truth